Influence Church exists to help you know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and influence your world. Some of you that doesn't know us, uh, or you are watching online, my name is Kathleen, and this is my lovely wife Kelly, and we are the pastor here at Influence Church. And today, we are experimenting something. Actually, we are going to tag team and share a message. Because we love doing ministry together. I love to start with something funny every Sunday. So a stranger approaches a pastor after service and said, I would like you to pray for my hearing. The pastor placed his hands on the man's ears and said a very powerful prayer. After that, he asked, how is your hearing? Surprised, the man said, I don't know. It is tomorrow. <laughs> he was talking about a court hearing, of course. <laughs> so uh, when you ask for prayer, be sure you put in all the details. Be specific. <laughs> be specific <laughs> when you ask for prayer. In the last couple days, a couple Sundays, uh, we've been sharing about uh, how important it is to be influential. And in today's world, you hear all kind of uh, YouTube and Facebook and TikTok and all kind of influencers. And I watch some of those, and after a couple months or a couple years or even a few weeks, they disappear. They are not influencing anymore. The influencing that we are sharing and we are talking about, it's an influencing that influence that actually we are empowered by God. And when we are following God's plan and God's design for us to be able to influence people, lasts for eternity, lasts for this life and in the other life. In the last two weeks, we learned how important it is to be intentional in influencing people to improve ourselves to lead, to guide our families, our kids, and to serve others. We learned that the more we know God, not just about God, the more we know God, the more we will be able to influence others. Today, we are going to look at means to be God's witness, says, to the end of the earth. Our Bible verse for this series was Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Today we are going to look at what means to be God's witnesses to the end of the earth. But you might ask yourself, what is a witness? If we are looking at the dictionary, we can see that witness has few meanings, but the most important are those two. Number one, a witness is someone that is asked to be present to a transaction, to see what is happening. God is calling us to witness what he is going to do or what he is doing. And that is us witnessing his work and his power. And second, the same, really important, is the second meaning is that a witness is called to testify what he or she saw or experienced. When we are going to share today, I would like you to think about that, those two meanings as a witnesses, is that we are experiencing God's presence, we are experiencing God's miracle, we are experiencing what God is doing, but the step two, the step number two is that we are having, we have to go tell others about what we experienced when we saw. All I want to do is go, can I get a witness? Okay, I got that out of my system. So what does it look like to be a witness? When I was 13, my family hosted our very first exchange student. Her name was Susanna, she was from Germany, and everyone called her Sani, which means sunny, and she was. She had the biggest inquisitive eyes and the smile that lights up a room, 
And um, she literally bounced when she walked, like as she went. She had the most crazy curly hair and the freedom in her spirit to match it. And she was kind and compassionate and she changed my life. So uh, you see, Sani didn't know it, but she was a missionary. She was a witness to the ends of the earth. She came to a suburban home in Edina, Minnesota, and spent 10 months with us, that, and we needed her joy and passion for Jesus. We were Jesus followers, but Sani took it to a whole nother level. Sani's heart was completely enamored with the Lord, and all she wanted was to know him more, to know his love, to follow his ways. And that overflowed into my life. Because as a 13-year-old, I looked up to this 16-year-old girl from across the world. And uh, in spending time with her, I saw a depth of relationship she had with the Lord that I didn't even know was possible before that. She would worship with her whole being. She would pray. She would read scripture. And she was not the usual like self-centered teenager, but she just exuded a love for people and a love for God. And she was a spiritual mentor to me just by being who she was. And because of her effect on our family and what a great experience that was, we ended up hosting many, many more foreign students. Um, from, and basically, the ends of the earth ended up coming to us. And we had students from Germany and Sweden and Norway and Mexico and Romania. And every person who stayed with us knew that we loved Jesus. And uh, we were so very impacted by all of them as well. And one such person was Catalina's sister, Maggie, which is how we met. And um, so really, Sani has a lot to do with the fact that we're together today. It started it all. She, she sure did. And um, I forgot to mention at the beginning that uh, we are not competing here. But we might ask you to vote at the end, we who did better. But. Vote with your applause. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yes, so my sister Maggie was here a long, long time ago. No, I am not that old, but sure feel sometimes. Anyhow, after she returned home, uh, Maggie was here just for, actually I think for three or four months that she stayed with uh, Pearsons, with my in-laws. And after she came home, uh, my in-laws, Kelly's parents, start visiting us, actually, I think, almost every year, for a couple of years. And after a few years, Kelly visited us, and then uh, that's how everything started. Uh, looking back to our story, I see how God prepared me to be able to have an influence, actually, to the end of the earth because I didn't realize when I was involved in church or when I was growing and I was a teenager and young adults, I didn't know I'm gonna end up on the other side of the pond, I mean ocean. But God had something in mind. And what I want to mention today is that we all have to be preparing ourselves for what God is going to do. Because we don't know where he's going to take us. We don't know how he's going to use us. But the goal is to be able to prepare ourselves. Since I was a kid, I loved to learn, study, but only what I thought is important to me. I loved to learn and study, but only what I wanted. So I wasn't a big school kind of follower because and I should not say that in yes. front of my teenagers, kids. Boys, because plug your ears. Boys, yes, you need to learn algebra. Two. I have no idea. You are not going to use it, but you need it to pass the test. Uh, never mind. Anyhow, back to my story. <laughs> I'll get in trouble quick here. Uh, I loved learning and studying, but actually, I dropped out of school when I was uh, 17 years old. I dropped out of high school to become a mechanic. 
and I became a mechanic at age 21. Actually, I became an accountant uh, because I didn't like to be a mechanic anymore. Uh, at age 24, actually, uh, I started my own company to do furniture, and we were making furniture for people and selling. And as you can see, I was learning, studying, I was moving from here to there. I was 25 years old when I realized that I need to finish high school. <laughs> I went back to finish high school, and then I got my pastoral degree. I'm telling you this because I wanted to learn, and one of the Bible verses that was stuck with me since I was a young adult was that we need to be the salt of the earth. And uh, in Matthew 5.13, we see that uh, Jesus is telling the disciples, you are the salt of the earth. In my mind, in my opinion, it was that more I know, more I study, more I knowledge I gain, better salt I will become. And then once I read these Bible verses, I realize that actually it's not about how, we, how much knowledge we gain. Don't get me wrong, we need to study, we need to learn, we need to improve ourselves because God put all those uh, classes there for us to grow. And not just in our relation with him, but also grow in knowledge, information, and developing our mind. I do believe in improving ourselves. But see, when Jesus told the disciples that you are the salt of this earth, actually those disciples spent only a few months with Jesus. They had no high school diploma, they have no uh, classes, they have no degrees. They spent only a few months in Jesus' presence. And that qualified them to influence the world. And they sure did. So the qualification is not coming only from what we learn and what we study. It's coming from spending time with Jesus, just like the disciples did. Sometimes we are thinking that we know so much, we have so much salt, that we start walking around, jumping for joy, and thinking that we give salt to everyone, right? There is salt, there is salt, there is salt, and without realizing, sometimes we throw salt in people's eyes. And you know, that's not pleasant, right? That hurts. The uh, Apostle Paul in Colossians says this, be wise in the way you act towards outsiders, non-believers. I don't want you to think about outsider like you are Democrat, I'm Republican, you are an outsider. This is not what uh, Apostle Paul is talking about here. It's about non-believers that they did not get to know about Jesus yet. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned, with salt. And this brought a lot of light in my life. Because so many times we are thinking we have the salt and we give people salt to eat. When actually we're supposed to give them food that is just little seasoned with salt. Because that's how people love their food with just little season. See, if you go and talk with somebody and you tell them like, hey, you are going in the wrong direction completely, turn around, come this way, they might not do it. But if you talk with somebody and you explain like, hey, if you go here, if you go here, if you go here, they will be able to make the right adjustment to be where God wants them to be. But we have to be influencers. We have to influence them in their lives. All we need to become influencer and to influence the world is to be intentional in spending time with Jesus. He will make us salt of the earth. And please, please remember, we do not know where God is going to take us. Or actually, we don't know who God is going to bring on our path to talk to that will be able to influence them. I was part of a young adult's ministry, and we were in that uh, youth ministry, a young adult ministry, probably around 35, 40 uh, 
boys and girls. And looking back to that, all that ministry and all fellowship and life that we did together helped us to impact the world. Because probably 20 out of those young adults are in UK, are in uh, uh, Norway, are in Ireland, are in Canada, are in Germany, are in Austria. That group, that young adult group, end up influencing people all over the world. And with today's media, with today's Facebook and connection, it's so amazing to be able to see how we have an impact on the world all over. But to be able to do that, we needed to grow together in our relation with each other and of course in our relation with God. We have people in, our, in this room and in the church who, are, who have gone to the ends of the earth. If you were born in a different country and you live here now, you're a missionary. You're not just a an immigrant, you're a missionary. You are a witness for Jesus right here. And when we all interact with people from different cultures, whether they come to us or we go to them, we get a glimpse of how heaven is described with every nation, tribe, and tongue being represented around God's throne. But what if you can't go, to the, can't go across the world? What if you can't hardly even get out of bed? What if your circumstances around you feel like they're keeping you from having influence? I wanna go back to our theme scripture verse that we already read today, but let's back up a couple verses. So Jesus had been resurrected and had appeared to his disciples over a period of 40 days, talking to them about the kingdom of God. And so the very, this is the very last conversation that Jesus has with his disciples before he's taken to heaven. So Acts 1, 6, then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? So what are they talking about? What does this mean? Well, the Jews at that time were under Roman occupation. They were suffering under the Romans. In fact, they'd suffered for hundreds of years under different oppression. And they thought that the Messiah, when the Messiah came, he was going to take over and free them from all of their oppressors and, and reinstate the actual kingdom of Israel on the earth at that time. So they're like, so are you going to do it now? Like, are, They wanted Jesus to change their circumstances. But watch how Jesus responds in verse 7. He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. In other words, don't worry about that stuff. Don't worry about your circumstances. And then in verse 8, which we've heard a number of times in the last couple weeks, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Your circumstances do not determine your influence. Where does Jesus tell his disciples in this verse that their power comes from? To witness. It's from the Holy Spirit. And we sang that song today and it just clicked with me. Come now and Holy Spirit, we know that you're with us and you're going to fill us. We are right back there again. Every week we've come to this. If we want more influence, we need more of God. Being a witness comes out of being empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's a supernatural power that comes from a deep relationship with God. It comes from the Holy Sp Spirit dwelling within us. And then his fruit comes out of us, like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and his gifts like prophecy and tongues and miracles and healing 
it all comes from the Holy Spirit. And it allows us to be his witnesses to ourselves, to our family, to our church, to our community, and to the ends of the earth. So let's read verse 8 one more time, because I just can't read it enough. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We are called to be influencers, and you might ask yourself, what can I do? And I want to give you a couple practical steps that anyone can do. Doesn't matter the gifts, doesn't matter the talents, doesn't matter the age, we all can do those steps that we can partner together. And number one that we all can do is pray for people to be influenced and touched by God through everything that we do. Pray for influence, church, to be able to touch people's life, to bless people. Pray for different missionaries or ministries that you might support. Don't just send a check. Before you write that check, say a prayer for them. Spend some time with God. And so many times we have no idea how powerful the weapon of prayer it is. Only in heaven we will realize how powerful the prayer was. When we'll find out all the answers to the prayers that we received, for all the prayers that we raised up to God, we'll be probably upset that we did not use that weapon of prayer more often. I feel like this is a good time to plug the, our Tuesday night prayer. It's not in our notes, but every Tuesday night we gather for prayer on Zoom. And you can find the link on influence.church and in the email, I send a weekly email out. And it's just so amazing how I could be like deflated and, and overwhelmed. And after that prayer time, it's like, like I have new life. And we're praying for people and we're seeing prayers answered. And so it would be great if you wanted to join us. Everyone is welcome. Yes, it's amazing to just see how God answered prayer, sometimes from just one Tuesday to another Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And we prayed for somebody uh, to be successful and pass a good test, and then pass the test. We pray for uh, pain and for healing, and those take place. It's amazing how power of prayer at work creates miracles. Apostle Paul is saying to, uh, in Ephesians, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am with them, listening to their prayer. God is listening to their prayer. We have to just come together and pray. And like Kelly mentioned, sometimes I'll go like, oh man, I forgot again prayer time. Let's do prayer. And sometimes I'll go to prayer just like I have to put my time in. But I don't know, five, 10, 15 minutes in that prayer time, something changed. And I come out of there like I can conquer the world again. It's amazing the power of prayer, the effect that has on us. Something else that we all can do is support financially different ministries, missionaries, and that can and will have an impact on this world. I'm not sure if all of you know or not, but we as a church allocate 10% from our income to support planting of other churches or missionaries or ministries and so forth. We are committed to be able to have an influence on the, in the world beyond what we do here, beyond what we do in this city, beyond what we do uh, through our people here. And we are so intentionally just taking 10% and sometimes, you know, I'm kind of a number guy, like, man, I have to send this money out. We could have, we could have a better kids ministry. We could have do, you know, I need a new microphone. We need a new this, we do a new that. But God always provided when we are faithful and just support what God is calling us to do. And that is, we are believing that 10% should go to outside ministries, like missionaries and so forth, or plant, planting new churches. And in, in the world we live in, you can go to the ends of the earth by turning on your phone, right? So we can be connected to people across the world. Be careful, because sometimes they scam you, just saying. 
Um, but we can be connected to people and have an impact um, just by what we're posting and what, you know, blogging and have a YouTube channel and, and how are you encouraging people towards God through that? And that's something that we all have access to. I love the version Bible app and they have just reached 500 million downloads. That's a half a billion downloads of this app across the world. They have it in 1,700 languages. And they're, they're translating it into, into more. And so many groups around the world are translating the scriptures into all these different languages. And it's, it's amazing. And another practical thing is just invite people into, we can invite people into our lives who are from different culture or different backgrounds from us. And um, we can listen to their stories and we can earn the right to share ours with them. And who knows what people across the world can be impacted because of our kindness and friendship to people right around us. By listening to their stories, we earn the right to tell them about our stories. People are not comfortable with us until we are comfortable where they are. Let me say it again. People are not comfortable with us until they are comfortable, until we are comfortable where they are. It's coming in my mind a story. Uh, probably three years ago, two and a half years ago, uh, I had a good friend that uh, was struggling financially and was a lot in debt, uh, almost $20,000 in debt, and creditor called, and he was looking, do I have to file bankruptcy or not? Or, and I was like, well, let's look at the finances, let's look at the numbers, and we work together, and work together, and make small adjustment here, make small adjustment there, and today, actually, he has no debt, and he has in his savings, savings account, more money than he, have, he ever had in his whole life. But see, that didn't happen just overnight. That happened by influence him, little by little by little. I could have just put together a plan on a piece of paper, give it to him as like, hey, there is a plan, follow it. But that is not influencing. When we spend time with people, that is influencing. So. We have to listen to their stories to be able to earn the right to tell them our story. And just remember, people are not comfortable with us until we are comfortable where they are. I'm not saying to allow them to stay where they are. I'm not talking about not helping them to get to a better place. But we have to go there for them to be comfortable with us. If somebody is drowning into a river, you cannot stay on a side and save that person. You have to jump in the river to save that person. We have to get wet to save that person. We have to be placing ourselves in their shoes to be able to understand them and how they are thinking and why they are thinking like that. Sometimes influence is just being with other people and doing life together. John Maxwell said this, four points, four bullet points that we can influence the world. Number one, choose to value people. Everyone is made in God's image and we are called to value that in them. Doesn't matter if it's a homeless down the street, doesn't matter if it's a sinner or a killer or a murderer, doesn't matter what they did. Every human being was created in God's image, and we are called to value that. Choosing to value people, it's a decision to see each human being we come in contact with, be it in real life or online in digital world, as somebody that God loves, and somebody that needs affirmation. They need to know that God loves them. Number two, it's choose to add value to people. It's not enough to just value people. What can we do 
to add value to people? How can we bless them? How can we guide them? How can we influence them to have a better life? We need to add value to people. And I'm going to go a little quick through those. We might make a whole new sermon in the future about those bullet points. But number three, choose to live positive values. We need to live those values in our lives. This is a decision to live a life that builds rather than destroys. Let's choose to not curse the darkness, but turn on the light switch. It's so easy in today's world to just blame government, economic uh, out there, and all kinds of things. And I'm a little disappointed sometimes that we see people falling for that, getting discouraged, and start not necessarily cursing, but start blaming others, instead of just trying to bring little light where we are. Let's be intentional in not cursing the darkness, but turn on the light switch anywhere we go. And if we live those, if we are living those positive uh, values, people around us is going to ask us about those values. And then number four is, let's choose to share those values with people. This is a decision to share with others the value that inspire and sustain our lives. A life of positive values will lead people to ask, what's your secret? How do you stay positive or generous or kind? But for them to be able to ask us that, we have to be leaving those values out there. And by leaving those values out there, we will be able to influence them for good. We will be able to lead them to have a better life. And back to what Kelly was sharing earlier, it's not by our own strength, it's not by what we are studying, it's not by what we are learning, which those are good, but it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that will influence and will make the change in their life. And you know what? If I will try to convince someone, if I will try to influence someone because what I know in my brain might last for a week or two, but when Holy Spirit convict, when Holy Spirit influence, when Holy Spirit makes the changes, it's going to last forever. So let's be intentional in allowing the Holy Spirit to make those changes and not us. A few years back, we took uh, our youth group to a mission trip to Uganda. And I was so, me personal, changed and impacted by those teenagers. To see them, how they were interacting and helping other people in a third world country. How they were bringing the good news. And at the beginning, I remember one young man like, uh, I don't know, I don't know what to say, I don't want to do it, and then we just, I just did it. Like, see, you don't have to have a, a poem learned, you don't have to have a, a script memorized, you just tell them about how God worked in your life. You know what, the next day, this young man did it, I was so proud, he did it 10 times better than I did it and to see the life coming out of them by influencing others. Because when we influence others for God, it's bringing life in our lives also. And we came out of this trip, and to be honest, I'm not sure if we influence more people in Uganda or if they influence us more. Us, more on us. Because to see those kids coming back home on fire for God and with a desire to just influence people for God was amazing. We cannot create influence that will last without the power of the Holy Spirit and with being in God's presence. I'm going back to what I said at the beginning. Those disciples spent only a few months in Jesus' presence, and they were qualified to become the salt of the earth, to become influencers 
in this world. And you know what? They sure did. For a couple thousand years, they are still influencing us. They are still influencing this world. But why? Because they were at Jesus' feet and they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. So my prayer for all of us today is that we will experience his presence like never before. I always, sometimes people ask me, didn't you experience God's presence? Yes. And then I ask back, don't you want to experience it again? Sometimes we feel that if we give our life to Christ and we experience God, uh, that it's one time event and that's it. But actually the Holy Spirit wants to fill us all the time, to be with us all the time. And to be honest, I need Holy Spirit in my life every morning I wake up and every evening I go to bed because I might not wake up in the morning if I go without him. We need to make Holy Spirit part of our daily life and not just a Sunday morning routine, not just on a Tuesday night prayer. It has to be with us on daily, daily routine, daily, daily routine. So I would like all of you to close your eyes. If you are here and you never gave your life to Christ, this is a perfect time for you to just give your life to Christ, to accept Jesus as your master, because if you'll spend time with him, he will qualify you to become who God called you to be in this life. If you are watching online right now, listening to my voice right now, and you never give your life to Christ, and if you just try to make it through life on your own, today I invite you to accept Jesus in your life because he is the greatest help. I give my life to Christ when I was a kid, 14 years old, and I never regret it because he empowered me to become who he wanted me to be. So if you decided, if you choose today life, if you need today a good friend in your life, a savior, I would like to just say this prayer after me. Jesus, today I recognize you as my savior. You died on the cross for me not just to survive in this world, but to thrive. I'm asking for you to just come into my life and help me live with you and for you for the rest of my life. If you said this prayer, I would like to reach out to us. Go on our website and contact us because we have an, an amazing book that we would like to mail to you, free of charge, that will help you grow in your relation with God. If you live in this area, we will really invite you to join us Sunday morning at 10 o'clock here because online is not the same as in person. And we will love to have you here with us, worshiping God. Let's worship God one more song. Let's stand up and praise God together. Another song.